This clip is about trigonometry, which isn't easy, but is actually quite satisfying once you grasp it. So I'm hoping this clip will help. It involves calculating bits of right angle triangles. It is only just for right angle triangles, but calculating all the bits around them. We've got three lengths, one, two, three, and two remaining angles, remembering that this is 90 degrees. Now there's certain labels that we give to bits of this triangle, remembering that the longest side is actually called the hypotenuse, quite a funny word, but it's called the hypotenuse, that's the longest side. And other labels, well if we consider this angle here, well this side is considered to be adjacent to it, and I always remember it actually touches that angle, the adjacent side. So the opposite side is just that, it is opposite that angle. If, however, we consider this angle here, well, this remains as the hypotenuse, it's always that. This becomes the adjacent side, it's the side which touches the angle, along with the hypotenuse, of course. And this is the opposite side to this angle. If the question is asking us to try and find this angle, and we don't yet know it, we often refer to it as theta, as our unknown angle. And this can be shown with either of these symbols, or indeed if we write it, it can be shown like that. That's theta. So how does this theory work? Well, let's consider the lengths of our triangle first of all. Let's consider the right angle part of our triangle first of all. And these are set lengths, we cannot change them. And because of that, the hypotenuse must also be a set length in order to fit that gap. Like so. Likewise, the angles in here cannot change. If, for example, this angle here got smaller, then the hypotenuse and its opposite side to this angle would also need to be smaller. Likewise, if the angle got bigger, then these two now are too short. So it has to be a set size. Now trigonometry uses the theory of ratios, and in this example we would use that theory to compare the length of this side against the length of this side to help us determine the angles, and also the remaining side. Let's put some numbers on this and try an example. Let's say that this is 3. Let's forget about units for now. It's complicated enough as it is. And this is 4. I don't yet know this length here, and I would like to know this angle of theta here. I don't yet know what it is. So for this example, I'm going to use a ratio which will compare the opposite side to the adjacent side. Now this particular ratio is given a funny name, it's called tangent, often abbreviated to tan, you'll see that on your calculators, tangent. So how do I use this ratio of tangent to calculate theta? Well, tangent is often just abbreviated to tan, so I can write the tan of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, and these are often abbreviated as well. Now in my example, the opposite side is 3, the adjacent side is 4, and this is a ratio, can also be written down as 0.75. But how on earth does that help us? Now this is the really clever bit, because the calculator can work out all of these ratios, so what we will need to do is type in the number 0.75, we then press the inverse button, and then we press our tan button. And that will give, actually give us an answer of 36.87 degrees, which is approximately 37 degrees. And we've worked out our angle of theta. What if then I didn't actually know the value of the adjacent side, but I did know the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Well, that will actually use a different ratio. Well, this ratio is called sine, and it's often abbreviated to SIN, but we still say sine rather than sin. So let's put some numbers in this and see what we get. Well, from before, I know that this was 3, and my hypotenuse is 5. I still want to work out what theta is. The sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So this is my new ratio. Putting the numbers in then, well my opposite side is 3, my hypotenuse is 5, using a calculator to work that out as a decimal, that is equal to 0.6. Now comes the clever bit again, 
slightly different with a different model calculator. Once again, I'm using the inverse operation, so I need to press the second function button, first of all, then my sine button, and then my 0.6. And that will also give me an answer of 36.87 degrees, approximately 37 degrees. The same angle, but using a different ratio and different sides. Now, if you've not already sussed it, there is actually a third ratio called cosine, which uses the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side to help us calculate our angles. And this is often abbreviated to just COS on our calculators. If my numbers remain the same, from before this was 4 and this was 5, well, I should still get the same angle of 37 degrees. So the cosine of theta is equal to, the ratio this time, is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is equal to 4 over 5. So this is the decimal is equal to 0 0.8. The clever bit again, going back to this model this time, so what I would type in here would be the 0 0.8, so I put the number in, 0 0.8, then the inverse button, and then this time it would be the cosine button, cos. And that will give me an answer, once again, 36.87 degrees, approximately 37 degrees. So, using each of the ratios in turn gave me the same answer for theta of 37 degrees. So just as a quick recap then, the tangent ratio was equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. The sine ratio was equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And the last ratio of cosine was equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. I hope that helps.